This is my favorite way to make a box. Uh, just start with uh, four pieces of wood, where two are long, two are short, no dimensions, I didn't measure anything, they're just all the exact same size. So here, just making the miters, you're gonna see that, you know, I, I'm not gonna be happy with this test that I'm gonna do, which means I need to move the fence over just a little bit, and I'll show you why here in a second. I wasn't happy with my test fit, so I moved the fence over just a little bit. And you're gonna see when I recut the miters how the saw blade actually comes up through the top. That's really important because on my test fit, I didn't have it completely all the way cut so the edges weren't exactly sharp enough. All I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cut the long pieces and I did the exact same thing where I'd already tested my, my test piece and I wasn't happy. So I readjusted my fence over just a little bit and using my miter gauge just to push it all through to make it easier. Now I'm gonna make the dado that goes in the bottom of the box so that the piece of uh, Luan can fit into the groove. Didn't do any measuring other than this right here doing a test and it wasn't quite big enough. So I just moved the fence a little bit and now it fits just fine. This is the first time I whipped out the tape measure. I measured the box to find out the size of the bottom and I cut the bottom piece so that it would fit. So here on the glue up, if you notice, put glue on one corner and then on a different piece on another corner. And all I'm gonna do here is just this is gonna be my, my first fit up. And the idea behind by doing it this way is that there's not too much glue at the miter all too often I see glue on both sides and what happens is it starts to slide around a whole lot. Now in this case, I'm just using a little bit, not a whole lot. I'm gonna put it together and then I'm gonna use a band clamp to tighten it all up. Now often with a band clamp, it would help to have a third hand, which I don't have. Uh, therefore, it became a, a little bit of a, kind of a, a puzzle piece to put it all together. But in the end, it worked just fine. Be sure to use the corners that come with the band camp, clamp because that really helps to keep everything nice and square. Uh, it, with doing this, I didn't have to adjust any of the angles at all, and it worked out just fine. I'm going to use a random orbital sander because uh, now with the uh, glue completely dried, uh, what it will do is it'll help sharpen the corners by keeping, you know, sanding only on the flat surfaces. Uh, there was a couple corners that were kind of sticking a little proud. And by doing it this way, it brings them all back nice and tight. The top is made from black limbo. I've already made one pass with a round over bit using the palm sander. This is just gonna be a second pass, uh, very little being taken off. Don't try to do too much in single passes. Uh, it never works out well. I didn't record when I made the underside of the top. Uh, I took the dimensions of the box when it was assembled, the inner dimensions, cut a piece of the wand to fit just inside that dimension, 
and I centered it on the bottom of the top. And I'll show you here in a second what that looks like. Just some hand sanding, uh, making sure to use a wood block to keep it flat so that you have even pressure all the way along. The random orbital sander, I used 60 grit, which helped to modify the corners just a little bit to make them nice and flat. Then going to go progressive from 120, 150, 220, and 320. It really made these uh, sides very, very smooth. I also sanded the top in the exact same manner where I went from 120, 150 to 220 to 320, and it too also came out very, very smooth. This was something I've never tried before on the internet. I watched a couple videos on how to take inkjet printing and transfer it to wood. There's lots of websites out there to do it. This was just done using basically a label uh, maker, backer, paper, what it is, you just print it out. The ink kind of sits on the surface and it never really dries on that paper. Taped it onto the wood and rubbed real good and it transferred very well. For the finish, I'm gonna use a shellac mixture that's been cut with uh, denatured alcohol. Uh, and basically it's a 50-50 cut. So half cup alcohol, half cup of shellac. I keep it in a container that's nice and tight. You could see when it was first there, it's been sitting for a while, so it separated. All you got to do is shake it up and be just fine. The foam brush that I'm using, I keep in a glass jar. That foam brush I've been using for several months. As long as you put it back in that jar with the top on, it will last for a long, long time. Applying the finish, nothing special, not being overly careful, just making sure not to get too many goobers, too many places. Thirty minutes later, a light sanding. This happens to be a sponge brush, probably 800 grit, but 320 grit would be just fine. I'm going to apply the same mixture in the same manner, and in this case, the final coats for the box. I ended up doing it four times. The methodical thumping you're hearing in the background, I'm doing this in my basement and I have a dryer running with uh, nothing in the dryer and it's set on air only. And what this is doing, it's helping to remove some of the uh, vapors and or any of the smells from doing this operation. If you think about it, most dryers move from anywhere from 45 to 60 cubic feet per minute. This way I'm able to do a lot of things in my basement and not really stink things up too bad.